I'm going to have Drake help us out to understand this, but it won't make any sense quite yet, but it will afterwards. I'll come back to this one. Let's look at this. We're going to talk about the force between two parallel wires. So wires that have current in them. So two wires that are like this. And either the currents are in the same direction or they could be in opposite direction. So let's first of all just look at the equation that governs what is the force between them. So this is, you know, let's say this is wire number one with current going up. So we're going to assume that's the case right here. We'll call this I1. And this one here will be, you know, wire number two with the current I2 going in that direction. Well, then our data booklet has a nice equation for us. It says that the force per unit length, that's important here, is going to be mu zero times I1 times I2, all that over 2 pi r. Let's talk about what each of these different letters I mean. This is, for example, this is an absolute force, it's true, but then if you divide it by the length, then it tells you know, the force per meter, so to speak. So let's see what everything here is. So we've got the force on one wire, that's going to be in newtons. We've got the length of the wire that's in meters. We've got the currents in the wire, so I1 and I2. The currents must be in amperes. We've got R as a distance between the wires, that's going to be in meters. So that means we're going to have this distance right here between them, that then will be called R. And then we've got something else, this mu zero. It's called the permeability of free space. It's a constant, and it's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 uh, tesla meter per amperes. But uh, this is something you can look up, so don't worry. But now keep in mind, what this tells you, it tells you the value of the force per unit length, but it doesn't tell you the direction. So I really want to remind you how the direction will work, because this is something I think is kind of fun because you get to, well, maybe not fun, but... <laughs> It's at least useful because you get to remind yourself about uh, how the hand rules work, at least two of the three. So we're going to remind ourselves, you know, so I'll say remember. So what we're going to do, we're going to try to remember the different hand rules. Now, if you have a current, so just a wire with a current in it, you can use this one here. Right? So I'm using my right hand. Um, so what you do is you point your thumb straight up and your thumb is the direction of the current. And that means your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. We call it P. Now we're also going to remind ourselves of the right hand rule number three. Now you might have learned some sort of gang sign version like this, but if you saw some of my videos, I show you a different way using sort of Star Wars to explain it. it doesn't matter, whatever works for you. But I'm just going to use this way, so that means I'm going to have my hand straight up, my own right hand, so that's, uh, that's at least on mine. I think it's mirrored for you. But so my own right hand, for example. And what I'm going to do is this, I just, I just have it straight. So that means my fingertips point in the direction of the magnetic field lines. My thumb gives me the direction of the current or the velocity. And in this case, it's going to be a current. And then my palm is the force. Like my palm points in the direction of the force. So let's see now if we can figure out what happens. So we've got two different cases. We've got, what about if they have the same direction? Let's see what happens there. So let's look at, first of all, what does wire one do to wire two? So let's look at this. First of all, let's apply right hand rule number one. What does that mean? We have a wire, and I'm going to use my right hand. So I use my right hand to put my thumb in the direction of the current. Use my fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. And if we look at this, that means that, remember, we, we normally draw dots to denote field coming out of the page, and we draw uh, X's to denote the field into the page. So just so ignore, ignore wire two for now. Just think about wire one. My fingers have to curl up in that direction and then they go down here. So wire one causes this on wire two. Does that make sense? So that means I can say then that two feels a magnetic field into the page. So what? What does that do? Well, now we can look at then what happens to number two. So now we're looking at this now. So now we've got this situation right here where, yes, this right here is, we're just going to focus now on wire two. Because remember, we're seeing what wire one did to wire two. Well, the first thing wire one did is it gave wire two a magnetic field now to play with and enjoy. So here it is. It's going into the page. So if we use right hand rule number three now, because that's the one for uh, what's the force on it, because I'm curious about where the force goes. So I'm going to put my fingertips in the direction of the magnetic field. So that means I'm going to put my fingertips into the page. I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of the current. And remember, the current goes up. Okay, so thumb goes this way over here. And if I do that, then my palm points to the left, at least on mine. So that means my palm then points to the left. That's going to be the force. So that means then wire two, maybe I'll write that down then. So wire two feels a force to the left. Okay, so that means this one here feels a force, yeah, to the left. 
Okay, let's now do the opposite. So now this time, let's think of what does wire two do to wire one? So now we're gonna kind of ignore wire one and just look at what does wire two do? So again, I'm going to use right hand rule number one. So we're gonna get really fast at this, right? So, whoops, I can't seem to remember how to write an H. Right hand rule number one. So what happens then? This one right here then, I'm going to make, you know, I'm gonna use my right hand rule number one. So put my thumb in the direction of the current. Remember the current is still going this way. So this right here was the current. Well, now this right here is the direction of the current, sure. Current goes this way. That means my fingers are curling. Uh, let's see, to the left side, it's a bunch of dots. And to the right side, it's a bunch of X's. So what does that do? Well, that means that wire one this time, wire one over here is gonna feel a magnetic field coming out of the page. See, these are all dots. So what does that mean? Well, that means then we can use right hand rule. We're gonna get really good at doing this. We're gonna do it a lot of times. So now we can use right hand rule number three, where now we're gonna see what that did. So remember, now we're just focusing now on wire one and what happens to it. So wire one now, let's see, it's got a current going up. And what's going on? Well, let's see, am I gonna use my flat to my right hand rule number three again? Remember this one here with the hand here? So I put my fingertips this time are gonna be coming straight up at me at least. And I'm gonna put my thumb going upwards because that's the current. And that means my palm points to the right. So that means then this right here happens this time. So this, this here is the F. Right, maybe I could draw a better uh, arrow here. So what does that mean? That means wire one feels a force to the right. And what's the result from that? That if we have the currents in the same direction, then the force is attractive. Now let's look at what happens if they're in opposite directions. So again, we're gonna do the same idea, except this time, you know, we're gonna be just considering this eye right here, for example, and then we're gonna consider this eye right here. I'm just trying to set us all up. There's near effect of wire two on wire one, so we're gonna consider this eye here. And we're gonna consider then this eye here. So again, same idea. Wire one, I put my thumb going straight up like this and then my fingers are curling in the direction of the current. This current hasn't changed, so that means it's still doing this. It's doing X's on the right of wire one and it's still doing dots on the left of it. All right, so what does that mean again? That means this time, two, wire two, is going to feel the magnetic field into the page. All right, and if two feels a force into, uh, sorry, not force, magnetic field into the page, now we focus on wire two. We're gonna apply the right hand rule number three. So if I look at this one here, this is what was caused by wire one. So again, I'm gonna use right hand rule number three. And what I do, of course, I take my fingertips, I put them into the page. I take my thumb, I point it down because that's the way the current is going, and my palm is pointing to the right. So that means it's gonna be this force to the right. And now let's do the same thing, except this time with wire two. Let's consider wire two now. So now I can apply uh, for wire two, what does it do on wire one? I'm gonna use my hand rule, right hand rule number one. I'm gonna have my thumb going down this time. And that means my fingertips then are curling. Uh, in this case right here, they're doing X's here. They're going into the page. And over on the right, of course, they're doing out of the page. So now we know that wire one feels a magnetic field into the page. So let me draw that over here again. So this is, now I'm just focusing on wire one. And again, I'm gonna use right hand rule number three. So for the last and final time, I take my, finger, my hand like this and I point my fingertips into the magnetic field. My thumb is gonna go up because of the current. And at least in my case for me, my palm then points to the left. So in this case right here then, my palm points that way, that's the force. So then I can state that one feels a force to the left. All right, so what does all this mean for us? Well, if this one's feeling a force to the right, this one's feeling a force to the left, then we could state that, hey, if the currents are in opposite direction, the force then must be repulsive. You could, of course, just memorize this, but I think it really helps to learn how it works because you could be asked all sorts of questions related to these forces and magnetic fields. I think it's a really good idea to know this. It's good practice as well. And now let's go back to this meme then. What was this? Well, a current carrying straight wire when placed parallel to another wire be like, hey, look, if it's up and down, what does that mean? Remember, if they're opposite directions, they're going to repel. Like, no, I don't want that. But then if they're in the same direction, Drake's like, yeah, that's right. 
So Drake can help you out here to remember this, okay? So Drake likes when they're both in the same direction because the force is attractive. If the currents are in the opposite directions, then the force is repulsive.